Sopo, an island populated with people who loved their land. He planted the seed of faith that made Cebu the cradle of Christianity in the Pacific. But soon the welcoming natives went up in arms when their freedom was threatened. Magellan met his end at the Battle of Mactan in the hands of Lapu-Lapu and his men. Almost half a century later, the Spanish ships returned. With an iron fist, Miguel Lopez de Legazpi fulfilled his mission to officially claim the island for the King of Spain and laid the foundation of the very first capital of the future nation, the Philippines. This time, the Cebuanos bowed and embraced the Catholic faith, loving wholeheartedly the Holy Child. 1569, King Philip officially conferred the title of the first Governor General of the island on Miguel Lopez de Legazpi. That was 452 years ago, when the province of Cebu was born. But after centuries of serving the King of Spain, the Cebuanos were awakened once more and rose up to claim their independence. 1898, the bloody battle of Tres de Abril exploded on the streets of Cebu. Shortly after, locals revolted against their colonizers. When the Spaniards left, the Americans took over and ushered in a new era of democratic rule. Cebu's rapid development began. Electricity, mass transportation, and clean water became available to the public. Mass media organizations sprouted. Hospitals and fine government edifices were erected like the iconic Cebu provincial capital, which was inaugurated in 1938. 1941. Cebu's rise was halted when the Japanese Imperial Army invaded, ushering in a catastrophic turn of events that led to its devastation during World War II. 1944, Sergio Osmeña became the first Cebuano to be president of the Philippine Commonwealth. The war continued to rage on, but the fierce Cebuano guerrillas stood their ground until 1944. When Allied forces landed in Talisay to help defend Cebu. Commander of the Americal Division maps the drive on Cebu City, second largest in the Philippines. Entering Pardo, our troops are greeted by Filipino civilians. This led to the surrender of the Japanese Imperial Army, ending three dark years of occupation. After the war, Cebu rose from the ashes and its people set their sights on a bright future. 1946, America keeps its promise. In a formal proclamation, President Truman recognizes the independence of the Philippines as a separate and self-governing nation. Freedom for the Philippines becomes a reality in the 20th century. Led by a long succession of illustrious leaders whose efforts have made Cebu what it is today. A cultural and historical melting pot. A business and trading powerhouse that remains a comfortable home to many. Cebuanos love their tradition but they are not afraid of progress. Cebu has become a home of a number of industries that drive the province's economy forward. Information technology, manufacturing, shipbuilding, and many more. A creative hub for artists, designers, and filmmakers. There is no shortage of colorful ideas. Tourism has become a major industry in an island filled with natural wonders. 2004, 
History was made when Gwendolyn Garcia was elected the first woman governor of Cebu. She implemented progressive programs that spurned development in the province. Sleepy towns became vibrant as she made sure everyone was on board as she led Cebu to become the number one province in the country. Cebu continues to lead the way. The rest of the country follows. Long live Cebu! Long live the Cebuanos!